The closer we look, the worse it gets. We have no e-brake cable hooked up here. We have um, the original drum brake e-brake cable down here. The <sighs> brake hose actually is not even attached up here. It's just kind of bailing wired down. Brake line is not attached over here. And the e-brake cable is also bailing wired together. And my curmudgeonly self isn't very happy about it. To solve our problem, we have a full axle from a 97 Cabrio. I decided I'd go for the full axle so I have all the parts just in case something breaks or I need uh, like a brake line or a template or whatever. It's all here and I don't have to worry about it. Let's take these uh, drums off here. We'll take a look at what's going on there. And then we can take the whole spindle off and I can go and probably restore these backing plates so we're ready to go for the next time. Timken. Nice. Only took a couple minutes to tear this thing down. Went pretty well. So otherwise I got the kind of basically everything everything unhooked. I'm going to work on the probably four bolts here to pull this off the spindle and then we can get that um, wheel cylinder in a vise if we need to to um, remove that. Here's a good example of a bolt that was sprayed with PB Blaster but was not broken loose yet. You can see none of the PB Blaster made it onto the threads so it really didn't do any good. Just a waste of money to do that in the first place. So now when we got the oil in from the, the middle between the parts we can see that it fully penetrated the entire bolt. So that's what you want to see especially when they were making that kind of grinding sound coming out. <laughs> Got the backing plate loose here, but I can't take the backing plate off until I remove this brake line. Yeah. Well, there we go, we got one stub axle out. Looks good to me, all the threads look perfect, and honestly the rust isn't that bad compared to what I was expecting. Uh, we do have a little bit of Looks like factory paint on this, so there is some life left in it. Uh, I got the Volkswagen logo, and we can work on this uh, e-brake cable later. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I can take this home and, and uh, dick around with it later on. I've been dealing with constant distractions lately. we got to get back on this um, Cabrio stuff. I got my drums all painted up nicely. Uh, the insides are still pretty rusty, but I don't want to paint in there, obviously. So. We're going to take those to work as well, and the thing that we have to mount all this onto, obviously, is the um, the backing plates, the drum brake backing plates. So let's pull those out of the rust remover and we'll take a look at them. Looking pretty good. Okay, next one. Got a bunch of crap on the back. I wonder what that's about. Hopefully it's paint coming off. I think it is. Huh. Man, look at that. These things have been in there for I think a week, which is way over what they recommend, but I think it's done an amazing job, honestly. These things look pretty good. Um, there's a little bit of rust in the very edges that I couldn't get out. I think maybe that uh, rust remover is getting a little worn out after doing several, several projects. But I'm pretty happy with how they're turning out here. So I'm gonna take a little acetone, take these down, and then we're going to skip right to pour 15 metal prep, and I will get that uh, zinc phosphate coating. Go ahead and paint them with pour 15. And as a reminder, pour 15 is not a one-step solution. You have to have the full system. You can't just jump into the paint because paint alone isn't gonna do what you want it to do. Got these things painted up last night. They don't have that uh, characteristic zinc phosphate uh, fuzz on them that they get on most parts I do. Might be because I use the acetone instead of the clear degreaser. But this is not a restoration project. It's a slap it together and make it happen. So we're gonna throw some paint on these things and see if it sticks. If it doesn't stick, I can always take them off and redo it. Got two coats on them. 
Look like I got pr pretty good coverage, so I'm gonna let them dry here. I'm gonna go do some errands, go to work, and <sighs> this weekend is pretty insane, so I'll probably have to install these uh, early next week. I got parts from a variety of manufacturers. I'm going to reference a picture from my phone, uh, well, several pictures from my phone um, that show what it looked like before. So we'll go through that, put one in, and then I'll bring you along for the second one, hopefully when I know what I'm doing. During a long day of rally organizing, sometimes you get a little cold. Go get a sweatshirt and warm up at sealbeamrally.team. Well, it's been a month and one day since I pulled apart the axle at work, and this has been driving me up a wall. Originally, I had bought a bunch of stuff from Napa and O'Reilly's that I was going to install, and then I realized that the uh, spreader bar thing between the the brake shoes actually got thrown away with the rest of my stuff. Um, when I was cleaning up at work, I was asked to get rid of everything else, and I just didn't think about it. So that went in the trash with the uh, hardware, and by the time I realized, it was too late. So these things are not going to help me because no one has that parking brake bar. I ended up having to order it from Eastern Europe. And guess what? I ordered this thing via DHL, and it took them a full seven days to get this from Minneapolis to my house. I am so frustrated. I even saw them on Friday. I walked into the truck and I looked around and it was not there. And it, oh my God, I just can't even. Um, it's here now. I decided that instead of having to order one part and then realize that I was missing another or find out that something wasn't right, I would just go and um, order the entire, entire brake assembly all at once. So here we go. Now the one thing I noticed first is that the uh, wheel cylinder holes are the same both ways and everything looks pretty symmetrical except for that e-brake cable hole. Of course I should have I should be able to put the e-brake cable in here but it's not here it's on the car. So I'm gonna have to do what I can here and I may have to pop a little bit off afterward but uh, that'll be okay. It's going to be fun. There we go. There we go. Got to be smarter than the brake shoe. That's how you do it without the special tool. There we go. That was a lot easier. Okay, this one is uh, ready. I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to get some uh, different bolts up here to hold these wheel cylinders in, but that is ready to put in the box. A lot of people are scared of drum brakes. They don't really take that much effort. Um, just take a couple different skills that uh, you develop when you work on drum brakes. So don't be scared of them. They're just getting getting your springs in the right place is the main thing, and then getting those those little uh, hand tricks to get the little clips and retainers on. This is the first time I've done drum brakes with the entire thing kind of assembled already, and I would <laughs> recommend it if you can find it. Um, even though I spent more money on the on the brakes overall, I think it was totally worth it because I just didn't have to spend that time assembling it. Um, it was way, way more convenient and everything's new, so I know it's ready to go. Seems like that might have been a little loose. 
Maybe shouldn't be able to do that with my fingers. Should finally be able to get the spindle off. We can start putting the stuff in now. We got uh, the old spindle here for the drum brakes. You can see it has no tabs for the, uh, the discs. I'm gonna use the newer bolts that came with the disc kit. Why not? To try to minimize corrosion here, I'm going to actually brush some anises on here, and I, I forgot my normal silver anises, so we're just gonna put that on. Should help it from sticking on. Swap into the stock setup today. Okay, I guess that's fine. I uh, wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> Let's take this off. It's supposed to be bolted through with the backing plate, so I shouldn't have been so careless. We talked about this last night, but the challenge right here is that I already assembled the shoes on the backing plate and I need to put this um, e-brake cable in here. So I'm gonna see if I can do it without uh, taking everything off the backing plate, but I'm not so sure it's gonna work out very well. <laughs> One of our techs here gave me a tip here on how to install the parking brake cable without pulling all the shoes off. So he says, you take the end of it, grab that with a vice grip. Get the side cutter and you want to pull it back. And then clamp it a little bit. Pull the lights off. And we should be able to gently feed this thing through where it wants to be. And I think we're there. Just gotta shove that on. Pull my spacer down. In. Quick tech tip as I'm doing the passenger side here, I realized that instead of shoving a pliers in with the uh, parking brake lever here, I can just shove a socket in. A 13 mil socket fits perfectly in there and holds this lever uh, maximum over and it, it really came in quick. I think I got that whole thing done in like maybe 30 seconds once I figured out to put the socket in there. So if you're doing that, keep it in mind. Now the thing I forgot before was that the spindle goes on before the backing plate, but it has to bolt all together as one. So we're going to pop this bolt off here quick, and then we'll pop those on as one. Forty-four. Looking pretty good. I would love to hook up the wheel cylinder to the brake line, make, sh make that stuff all work before I stop here, but I gotta make sure this car can roll out of the shop. This is a working shop, but I can't keep this here. So we're gonna put on the wheel bearings and the drum, slap this thing together so it rolls. I know I have an e-brake, and then I can go to the other side, do the same thing to that, and if I don't have time today, at least it'll roll out of the shop. I did clean the drums up a little bit at home. I did the needle scaler around it, and then I put some um, engine on it just so it looks a little better when it goes in and I have to go here I'll wipe out the old grease we'll put some new grease in I didn't uh, didn't touch the races so I should be able to slap the bearings in here and slap the seal in pop that thing right on the car <laughs> cool looking good enough for girls I go out with Do we think the dust cap from the disc swap will fit this? Well, heck yeah, it will.
looking pretty good here. I have to hook up the new hose. I have to figure out how to make the line fit there. Maybe make a little extension in there. Uh, and then I have to work with the wheel speed sensor, this ABS sensor that apparently was on this car, maybe on the old backing plates, but I didn't know. And it looks like I got a, a spare parts axle that did not have ABS, even though it's two years newer. So I have to figure out what to do with the ABS thing, but in the meantime, I'm going to move over to the other side. I'll do all this drum brake conversion stuff, try to get this done the next uh, like two hours before I have to uh, actually start work and uh, just tie this ABS thing up for now. And we'll have a car with an A-brake and we can roll it outside and stop it in the yard. There we go, we got the passenger side on, it is all set up nice and I realized, well, with some help, because I never work on rear disc brakes. I don't, I don't think I've ever owned a car with rear disc brakes. So I didn't realize that the hose here is just to allow you to do brake pads with the, with the calipers. So um, if I can pull this line off and pull the line off from the uh, parts axle, I should be able to maybe get that thing uh, tied up today. All right, to get that brake line taken care of, I pulled the parts axle out of the um, shed over here. I think these brake lines here will kind of swap over directly. We're gonna try it, uh, but <laughs> they're a little bit crusty, so I wanna get a little heat on here. We're gonna get the oxy-acetylene torch out. I've never used one of those, but uh, heard that that might be the, uh, the solution tonight. Let's give it a shot. Listen. You hear how snotty that is? That's perfect. We're gonna heat this nut up. Not the line. We don't want to heat the line. As soon as that line gets hot, it gets brittle. Yeah. Okay. Pull it off. It, Ten minutes. Got more water, right? on film. Whoa. I can't believe that ain't coming out. Okay. Pop goes the weasel. That's all the water I got. Oh, that was the torch going out. You can shut that up. Tanks off. There we go. Came off. Yeah. Yeah. It like a top. Perfect. It's uh, loose from the line as well. That's called fire and rain. Perfect. I've watched technicians for 30 years heat stuff up red hot and put their wrench on it and start yeah. doing this while it's yeah. red hot. All it does is ruin the threads, ruins the wrench, ruins the fucking fitting. But if you cool it down, it shocks the rust right off it. Got this good. Uh, that side's looking nice. That side's looking pretty nice too. So, um, you know, it's got a little rust on there. Not ideal, but I think it'll work. Now let's see if we can get this other side loose. With the whole brake line off, I can put my uh, box end wrench on this thing. Hopefully get a little better purchase. Perfect, look at that. Let's work on this one now. Well, let's turn on the hose behind it. Yeah, that's the ticket. Another little quality of life thing here is that I'm taking these uh, nuts, pulling them back a little bit, and putting a little NSCs on there. Um, and that'll ensure that the lines will be less likely to seize to the nuts and vice versa. Oh my God, was that pain in the dick. Uh, this thing, I, I did not bother replacing the hose. I got one, I was gonna put it in, but not worth it. Um, this this brake line here makes a little S in there and that S is just impossible to put in. You can't get a wrench in there very well so uh, I ended up putting a wrench um, on the outside on the hose side and then uh, put another one over here and I was able to work them both and get them put, put together. Got the uh, hose up here um, put up 
that's uh, semi-clipped in. That clip doesn't really work anymore. Uh, this one, cl this clip works, and I got it on the wheel cylinder. So off to the other side here. Uh, this this clip is broken too, of course. They always are. So I'm gonna pop this thing on. Uh, see how far I can get. Alrighty. Well, I got this uh, line on here. It looks pretty good there. Looks pretty good up here. I'm not sure this thing is tight enough, but we will uh, fill it with brake fluid tomorrow morning and find out. Yep, you're getting bubbles. Alrighty, well I got the brakes. I think I bled them pretty well here. Kind of hard to tell when I don't have the, the hand bleeder thing, but it was, it's looking pretty good. It feels pretty firm. So I'm going to finish installing the engine mount bracket that I didn't install last time. Take it for a drive and see how it feels. Get the key in this thing. Brake works a little bit. Let's see if it works a lot of bit. I think the uh, ABS sensors are still hanging out the back, so that's not the uh, the best. But we can go around the block here and feel it out. Make sure everything feels good. Honestly, this, the brakes feel great. Torquey little Volkswagen. Oil pressure light. I know there's an oil pressure sensor issue up there. oil but it is kind of frothy there's our oil pressure sensor thing here maybe that's why they have that We got the oil pressure light again. Rev it to 2000, see if that'll do something. Okay, basically just gonna idle it like a thousand RPM and see what happens. Brakes might be a little soft. I, it's kind of hard to tell. So far doing okay. Doing about 1150 RPM. Well, no oil pressure light. Well, on, uh, on the test drive there, I found the brake pedal was sinking when I was uh, stopped. So I guess that looks like I'm gonna need a master cylinder for that. Thankfully, it looks like no leaks on the lines, so I don't have to worry about necessarily um, doing any more work to that. I'm gonna call this good for now. This episode is way long enough with all the um, random footage I took. So I will see you next time. Uh, I'm not sure, do you guys want to see the master cylinder uh, swap out? Uh, do you want to see any more work on the car? Because this is kind of a um, kind of outside my normal purview. Otherwise, um, oh, I have sweatshirts. And if you want one, you can order one on team. See you later. Press on. Why are you doing this? Just does, to document. Does this make you happy? Just to document your work day. Now we got audio recording too. Oh yeah. Oh nice. Is that is that happening? You may be recorded for quality purposes. Oh you missed. Thank you for the fucking diaper. What is this? That's what was in the toe of my boots.